All right, Crystal, what's on your radar? Well, the folks over at The Intercept have broken another bombshell in the smear campaign against progressive candidate Alex Morse, revealing the complicity of the Democratic Party in Massachusetts. So you will recall, as we covered here last week, that a group of college Democrats had made a series of relatively vague assertions of improper conduct against Morse. Morse is an insurgent challenging House Ways and Means Chair Democrat Richie Neal. Those allegations included overly intimate social media interactions, matching with students on Tinder, and sexual contact with students at a university where he was a lecturer, though not his own students. It's worth noting here that Morse is only 31, and so essentially they accused him of having consensual sex with people in his same age range. Now, we all had Alex here on Rising last week. He defended himself, apologized if he ever made anyone uncomfortable, and also provided some new information as to why he believed this to have been an orchestrated attack. And I will be very honest, your question about how long have we heard about this, the, this story has been shopped around the national publications for the last several weeks. Hmm. And hmm. Politico, the Washington Post, other national publications refused to print it because they couldn't get anyone on record. And so basically the UMass Daily Collegian just printed word for word a, an email from the College Democrats and the mainstream media, I think, have done an incredible disservice uh, by amplifying this. And huh. publications from the Boston Globe to other outlets have given more scrutiny to my personal sex life and personal life than they've ever given scrutiny to Congressman Neal's corruption and the way in which he's used his power over a 30-year period. So as the week progressed, we learned more and more. As it turned out, the whole operation was apparently spearheaded by a Pete Buttigieg supporter who was desperate to get a job with Richie Neal, calling himself a Neal stan. Guess he believes in ethics for those who want them. He had another student attempt to lure Morse into sending inappropriate messages on Instagram. However, all they actually managed to get out of him was some standard issue friendly banter about his weekend. That didn't stop these students from crowing that this harmless exchange would sink Morris's campaign. In response to this new reporting, the Massachusetts Dem Party feigned deep concern, saying they'd launch an investigation in September so as not to interfere with the primary, of course. But now we are learning that while they were playing dumb, the Dem Party was actually complicit in helping to launch this attack. So here's Ryan Grimm, Owen Higgins, and Daniel Boguslaw writing for The Intercept. They report that while Dem leadership was publicly promising an investigation behind the scenes, the state party had been coordinating with the College Democrats of Massachusetts to launch those very allegations that, according to five sources within the state party and connected to the CDMA, a review of messages between party leadership and CDMA leadership and call records obtained by The Intercept. The documents show that the Massachusetts Democratic Party's executive director, Veronica Martinez, and chair, Gus Bickford, connected the students with attorneys. Among them was the powerful state party figure and attorney, Jim Roosevelt, who worked with the college group on a letter alleging Morse behaved inappropriately. Now, Roosevelt is a noted Bernie hater. He's also a Richie Neal donor, and he also reportedly pushed the group to go public over the objections of some members of the college dem. So, bottom line, although the Democratic Party is supposed to be neutral, and certainly claims to be neutral, behind closed doors, they were aware of the attack on Morse, helped plot it, and then promptly moved to throw the college Dems under the bus when the whole tawdry affair was exposed. Richie Neal is denying that he had any knowledge of the attack, although a senior staffer of his reportedly indicated earlier this year that they weren't too worried about Morse's challenge of Neal because they believed rumors that he had slept with college students would emerge at the right time. So, friends, what should we learn from all of this? Well, first of all, just because someone uses the correct in vogue language to make an allegation doesn't mean we should instantly melt down and throw the accused under the bus. Ask some simple questions like, what are you actually even accusing this person of? Is what you're alleging to be improper actually improper? Is there any evidence to support it? Does anyone involved in leveling the charges have an ax to grind? But beyond this, it's an important reminder once again that no matter how nice you are, doesn't matter what lengths you go to in order to try to get in the establishment's good graces, if you are a progressive or leftist or represent any sort of even minor challenge to the established order of the Democratic Party, they will stop at nothing to destroy you. There's no principle which cannot be abandoned, no tactic that's too brutal. In fact, even now, after all of this has been revealed, 
someone is newly up with ads on Facebook, still fishing for dirt on Alex Morse. Guess it's another Neil Stan here. Because when it comes to maintaining their power and their cartel-like control over the consultant industrial complex, little orchestrated smear campaign is nothing. They'll rig debates, They'll insist on the use of unelected superdelegates. They'll try to count immigrant caucus goers in Iowa as less than their white counterparts. They'll give up on getting an accurate count altogether if they suspect it might not go their way. They'll partner with their media allies to declare losers the real winners. They'll partner with their media allies to declare you and your supporters akin to Nazis, belittle your policy as the green dream or whatever to the press. They'll push forward with primaries in the face of a pandemic, etc., etc. They will fight you so much harder than they ever fight the Republicans because the Republicans aren't actually a threat to them. Not really. These people, the very same ones whose failures helped to bring us Trump, have only become more famous. They've become more revered, more celebrated in the Trump era. In fact, in some ways, the worse the Republicans are, the more it benefits the corporate Democrats. The more they can say, oh my God, every election is existential, so you must not dissent. You must just back without question the candidate we say is the right one or else the evil Republicans will come to power. So yeah, they'll make up their mean zingers about the GOP and go on with the Cole Wallace to cry about how terrible they all are. Then they'll go right back to cooperating on passing gigantic military budgets, screwing over the Postal Service, and crafting bad trade deals. Just look at the sad example of Elizabeth Warren. She did every last thing the establishment demanded of her, knifing her friend Bernie over and over again, abandoning every last principle she ever had in hopes that she'd get that VP slot. She gave it all up and she got nothing in return. The establishment never wavers for a second in seeing the left as their real enemy. What they tried to do to Alex Morse is an absolute outrage and scandal, but it should not surprise you in the slightest. And Sagar, mm -hmm. I don't think anyone will be surprised to no. see that the Democratic Party had a hand in all of this. Nevertheless, it is so important to have seen it all revealed and exposed here. Yeah, I mean, this, it shows you the independence of, in, or the the benefit of independent media. People mm -hmm. like Ryan, real reporters who are out there yeah. and who are dogged. But really what it shows you is, it's like we said, and I think I said here during the primary, when Bernie was doing his whole, like, Joe, my friend, I'm like, They'll kill you. You know, I mean, they will stop at nothing yes. to destroy you. And they always have been, right? This is this is always the tactic used against people who are anti-establishment than establishment, like you said. And I think the same dynamic is true for Republicans, is that they would rather lose this election. They would be so happy if Trump were to lose and they could be in the minority so they could do nothing and then fundraise hundreds of millions of dollars on Benghazi 3.0 or whatever they come up with under Biden-Harris. It seems like the same dynamic for the for the Democrats, right? Which yeah. is that I'm not necessarily on the losing front, but, and if you pose a threat like Morse does to somebody like Richie Neal, then they have, they have to not just take you down. They can't just even beat you. I mean, before this, Morse was not really favored to win that election. They have to go out and try to use your personal sex life to destroy you. This is like Lee Atwater stuff, right? Oh, yeah. the, from the Republican playbook, being used against a progressive Democrat. It's as dirty as it gets. But it, but it, again, it's that is the true threat in life, right? It's somebody who's calling out your money. Somebody who's calling out who, which you know, which industries that you've been flacking for. That cannot be tolerated. It's those people that have to be destroyed, not the people that are complicit in this system that they purport to be a resistance to. And by the way, I mean, Alex Morse is He's so... A nice guy. Uh, yeah. well, uh, we should <laughs> yeah. say that, actually. So, yeah. you know, some of these groups that had been like, oh, we're going to pause our endorsements or we're not sure, we're going right. to wait and see, they've all now come back right. and they've come on board. Sunrise Movement among them. And he sent a response letter that Ryan also got a hold of. And it is... If I had been smeared in this way and people right. had just backed away from me, I would not be a quarter as nice as this guy is. He's like, glad we're back in it together. And I still like, I apologize if I met anyone uncomfortable and I learned something about the power. Dynamic. I mean, what an incredibly nice person. And by the way, it's also worth pointing out. He is way better than Richie Neal in terms of, uh, you know, he backs Medicare for All. He backs a Green New Deal. He's been incredibly critical and, and prosecuted the case against Richie Neal on his corporate, like, toadying mm -hmm. that he has done more than almost anyone else in this entire town. But Alex Morse is also not, like, some wide-eyed lefty. No, uh, yeah, in not his, really. In his Tinder right. profile that was revealed, yeah, Hillary there was a Hillary Clinton <laughs> picture in the foreground. So even someone like him that... 
you know, he's, yes, he's a threat to Richie Neal potentially here in this election. Um, he's not like this crazy leftist who's just going to burn the place down, but they can't even tolerate that. I'm hoping maybe this all backfires on Neal. I'm hoping that it's helped to raise the profile of this race and give Alex Morris more of a shot here. But it's really hard to say because while we're covering it, while The Intercept has been all over it, Dan Marins at Huffington Post has also been all over covering this. So far, maybe, you know, I should check again this morning, but so far, although the local press and some of the national media picked up the initial story, they haven't really covered what has yeah. been revealed since then that this was all an orchestrated smear campaign, which to me is a much bigger story than whatever the initial allegations were to start with. Well, it, again, just shows the biases of the of the national media and of that local press, which probably is in the tank for Neil because, you know, they've known him and it's all an establishment and that's how it works. Yeah, but he puts ads in their papers Smear campaign whatever. like this, you basically have to be a very online person in order to know about this. If you're a normal voter going about your daily life, you probably saw one article on this. Now you're not seeing anything. I think that's a disgrace, and Alex Morris should not be nearly as nice as he is being. I think he should really prosecute his case to his actual voters in the local press and make this a steering indictment of the media and of much of the left, which would like put their endorsements on pause and all this other nonsense. Whenever the stakes are existential like they claim, they don't really act that way whenever it actually comes about, do they? Well, isn't that yeah. the truth? All right, Sagar, looking forward to your radar. That's next.